Welcome to the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. I'm your host, Molly Watts. If you want to change your drinking habits and create a peaceful relationship with alcohol, you're in the right place. This podcast explores the strategies I use to overcome a lifetime of family alcohol abuse, more than 30 years of anxiety and worry about my own drinking, and what felt like an unbreakable daily drinking habit. Becoming an alcohol minimalist means removing excess alcohol from your life so it doesn't remove you from life. It means being able to take alcohol or leave it without feeling deprived. It means to live peacefully, being able to enjoy a glass of wine without feeling guilty and without needing to finish the bottle. With science on our side, we'll shatter your past patterns and eliminate your excuses. Changing your relationship with alcohol is possible. I'm here to help you do it. Let's start now. Well, hello and welcome or welcome back and welcome to my very first Monday episode of the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. With me, your host, Molly Watts, coming to you from, let's go with a balmy Oregon. It was steamy last week. This week it is balmy. It's actually, gosh, dare I say perfect? We are mid 80s. It is early September. Cool in the morning. I just, oh my goodness, this time of year is, it's really got to be right up there with some of my favorite time in Oregon. So here we are, ready for Mondays. And I am super excited to share with you this episode today. I am talking to Katie Gary. And Katie is the founder of Seek. Seek is the first at-home lab test that major measures how alcohol impacts women's health. It is backed by clinicians from Penn University, Rutgers, Mount Sinai, and UCLA Health, and its mission is to help women identify early indicators of alcohol-related disease before a diagnosis and feel better along the way. So Katie Gary is... Um, the founder and the CEO of Seek. She really uh, is amazing. She's a young lady and she really spent years trying to understand her for her own self, how alcohol was impacting her health. And after looking, she's going to share that story with us in this episode, but she realized that there were more questions than answers with regards to how alcohol was impacting her, and she decided that she wanted to do something about it. So that's what she did. Seek really measures how alcohol impacts your health the same way that people use fitness trackers to monitor things like heart rate, glucose levels, etc. I can't wait to have you learn more about this. I'm fascinated by what this can mean for women's health. And I think it's a great affordable way to get some answers for yourself, especially if you're somebody who is not an alcohol minimalist yet. If you are over drinking and you are concerned and it goes beyond just liver tests, right? Because alcohol impacts all of our systems. And we know that we know it impacts our sleep. We know it impacts our blood pressure. We know it impacts our mental health. It impacts stress, inflammation in the body. So I really hope that you check this out. There will be links in the show notes, of course. Here is my conversation with Katie Gary. Hey, good morning, Katie. Thank you so much for being here on the Alcohol Minimalist Podcast. This is going to be an exciting conversation. I'm really delighted to connect with you. Science, alcohol, it's kind of a thing that we talk about all the time here on Alcohol Minimalist. So what you're doing and what we have to talk about is super exciting. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Molly, on. Um, I absolutely love what you're doing and I love the podcast. And so I'm so excited to dig in, especially with someone who's so knowledgeable. <laughs> well, I don't know if I can say that I'm as knowledgeable as you or as what you've learned and educated yourself on. I definitely, uh, you know, yes, I have taken time to educate myself on the science and science of alcohol, but I never thought about this idea. And so let's talk about SEEK and what you, you know, what led you here and where this idea kind of like dawned on you and you thought, yeah, that is what, what we need, what women specifically need with regards to 
creating a different relationship with alcohol. Cause I think at the end of the day, what that's really what we're talking about is understanding your relationship with alcohol and how it's impacting your body and making changes if it, if, if it's so desired. Yeah, a hundred percent. So, um, I, I guess I've always been kind of curious about my relationship with alcohol. I grew up in a family with a lot of alcohol use disorders. I was always kind of cognizant of my drinking habits, um, loved drinking, but it didn't really impact my life in a big way. I wasn't a daily drinker. Um, and I was working for a women's health magazine. This is taking us back about eight years. Um, so I was researching and writing about issues related to women's health. Um, was really healthy at the time. The joke that I always say is that I would meal prep chia seed pudding for breakfast. Uh, we had yoga classes in the office. <laughs> so um was really into health and wellness. Um, and I got blood work back from my doctor just at an annual physical that was a little bit abnormal, uh, which surprised me. And so I was like, um, I'm really healthy. Like this doesn't really make a lot of sense. And then my doctor was like, well, do you drink? And I was like, yeah, I do. But I don't think I drink more than friends, family, coworkers. At the time I was drinking about 14 drinks a week, I would probably say, which is, um, you know, has much more of an impact on you than I had realized. But to me, that just seemed kind of average. And so he was like, well, it could just be because your body's different. It could be because you metabolize alcohol differently. It could be a gen genetic predisposition for some other things, but didn't have a lot of other information or really guidance even to share with me. And so I was like, okay, well, that kind of sucks, but <laughs> I don't really know what to do with this information from here. I'm not going to make changes to my drinking habits yet. Um, but that was the first alarm bell. And so then for the years to follow, I would always kind of shyly bring it up at different specialist appointments, whether it was the OBGYN, um, the dermatologist, I had really bad cystic acne in um, 2020, right before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, um, I just became a lot more comfortable, I guess, with drinking at home. Uh, so then I became almost a daily drinker. We shift kind of out of the pandemic and it was really tough for me to switch from that like daily glass of wine plus glass of wine after work to what I was doing before, which probably was drinking a little bit too much anyway, but it was more socially on weekends, sometimes, you know, doing dinners, happy hours, stuff like that after work. Um, and so tried all these hacks, you know, I've worked in and out, in and out of health tech. Um, so I was experimenting with different like hangover hacks, but also things to just make sure I was replenishing my body and, um, you know, without knowing if it, anything was actually working, but just trying to make sure that I was feeling better and taking care, care of my health, knowing that I did have that abnormal blood, blood work. Um, and then finally, in the beginning of 2023, I was about to turn 30 and I was like, I have all these micro symptoms related to alcohol. I hate that I keep having a glass of wine every night after work um, and that I feel like I don't have any control over it. So I decided to take a break from drinking. Um, and made it like halfway through dry January. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this, but that almost two weeks was enough for me to be like, that felt really good. I really want to give this another go. So then I gave it another try in February and, um, it just stuck. I felt amazing. I really kind of like gave the break from alcohol enough time for the benefits to really seep in. Um, and then from there, because of how good I was feeling, I started to dig into research a lot more June last year, 2023, I thought, why isn't there a test that women can take to learn more about how alcohol impacts their health, kind of to fill that gap that I've been trying to fill all of these years um, and wasn't able to get from working with my primary care physician or different specialists. Uh, I had worked with Modern Fertility on the agency side in 2018, and so I was pretty close to kind of what they had built. And even though fertility testing is so common today, at the time, there was so much skepticism around what they were doing. Their big bet was that women want, want to learn more about their fertility hormones, even if they don't want to have a baby. And so my big bet is that women want to learn more about how alcohol impacts their health, even if they don't necessarily want to stop drinking entirely. And so um, from there, kind of just hit the ground running, was able to build a medical advisory board really quickly to develop um, our test. And just a lot of things went oddly well really quickly. And so it kind of felt almost meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It is a super exciting product. Let's talk about what Seek is so we can, you know, yeah. so everybody understands why we're talking about yeah. this, what it is. It's super, it's super cool. So 
Tell yeah, us what yeah. it is. So we have developed uh, the first at-home lab test that measures how alcohol impacts women's health. So we, the way that I like to describe it is we use all the all these fitness trackers, health trackers to monitor things like our heart rate, glucose levels, menstrual cycle. If we drink alcohol, there's absolutely no reason that we shouldn't have more insight into how alcohol impacts our body. Um, table stakes for preventive health to keep catch early indicators of alcohol related conditions, but also just to address any of those annoying, frustrating, lingering symptoms. I'm not talking about hangovers. I mean, trouble sleeping, rosacea, gut related issues, um, you know, and then we could go deeper into like cardiac liver related issues, which I'm sure that we'll get into. Um, but that just kind of didn't exist. And so that's the test that we've brought to market. Uh, the way that it works is it's an at-home blood test. It's a finger prick sample collection. It's not a new testing mechanism or anything like that. We use the same one that Modern Fertility uses. Um, once you get your test, you ship your sample out to our lab. You get your results within a week. We say packaged in a way that's easy to understand, even if you've never gotten lab work done before. And so by that, uh, I think of it in two ways the voice kind of explaining the different biomarkers, how they impact your health, how alcohol could be impacting them is almost like we like to say a friend that you've gone to happy hour with, but maybe she's a nurse <laughs> or as a science background, she knows a lot more than you, but someone who's non non-judgmental, friendly, motivating, just here to kind of like educate and form. Um, and then the second piece is that we personalize your test results, which um, we package with what we call alcohol health plans, to your health goals. So let's say a woman comes to us and she's like, I know that alcohol is impacting my sleep. I've tried to make some changes, haven't seen an impact. I want to investigate further. Um, I know that alcohol could be impacting my symptoms during menopause. I want to investigate a little bit further. And then maybe she has a family history of breast cancer. So she's like, I know that alcohol impacts my risk for breast cancer. I want to dig in a little bit more there as well. Then we would lead with sleep, menopause, breast cancer risk, but we would include insights across all the health categories. So you can kind of poke around. Our hope is that you go into the experience getting something that you wanted to learn, but also you come out learning something that you didn't that will motivate you to kind of keep coming back um, and incorporating preventive health when it comes to alcohol into your life. And then I am assuming I'm just making this assumption because of course it's a biomarker, it's a test, it's a it's a snapshot in time, right? So we mm -hmm. are using that information, generating that information so someone can have a further conversation with their primary care doctor so that they're better prepared. Because we, as we all know, the doctors are like, so how much do you drink? And somebody's like, I don't really want to tell them how much I drink because I don't like how that answer or they're honest, you know, hopefully, but regardless, it's a pretty limited scope typically. So this would just, I would assume better enable you if you're concerned or even whether, you know, or just regardless, better inform you to have a conversation with your primary care doctor. Yeah, a hundred percent. So we um, give you the, of course you could kind of log into your Seek account and show your doctor your whole plan, yeah. um, that view, but we also make it really easy to print and PDF the lab report in a format that your doctor will be really familiar with. So you can just email it to them. If you're comfortable with that, you can print it out, go through it with them in person. Um, that's certainly something that we encourage. And then um, if you do have any questions, we have a team of medical advisors um, our lab reports are physician um, approved, you know, we have kind of like a whole holistic team. So um, feel free to also ping us with any questions, yeah. um, which women already have been doing. And so we're pretty fast. We usually have, I would say like a five hour turnaround time. <laughs> don't, awesome. don't, don't count me on that for now, but yeah, <laughs> quick, quick on email. <laughs> um, so I'm curious about this because this was a, the, the thought I immediately had. Do you give people recommendations? And I'm asking this because this happens to me. People are going along in their lives and maybe they've been listening to me for a while and they're thinking, yeah, I should really be like minimizing alcohol. I should be reducing my intake. I should be prioritizing alcohol-free days. I should be sticking to a plan if I'm going to include alcohol in my life, all the things that I talk about. And then something will happen and they'll have a a bad and off plan night, they'll over drink and they will reach out immediately and say, okay, I need help. I've got this. I need your help. I need to get in, into your programs, you know, whatever it is, follow my train of thought here. So somebody goes out, has an over drinking experience and immediately fills out the information for seek wants to know, like, I need to know what kind of damage am I doing to my body here? Do you make recommendations to people as they are taking this test? Like 
they should wait until they have put together some alcohol free days. Tell me about that piece. Is it like, okay, well, yeah, go ahead and prick your finger the night after you've had, or just in a more typical pattern. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I totally do. So I would say, I would say, um, our recommendation is that if you're a regular drinker, so you've consumed alcohol in the last month, then your test results will be accurate. Um, the more you drink, the more likely your biomarkers are to be impacted. (laughs) Right. So that's what I was kind of getting like, and I know this from personal experience because I had like a many, many years ago now, but had a gallbladder flare up. And when I did, I had to go to the doctor and I'd had like, it was right after um, the holidays and new years. And so I'd had like multiple days of heavy drinking, heavy food, this whole, you know, lots of, and so my liver tests came back very, very elevated normal. And I was a very, I mean, I was a very, I was a heavy drinker by definition, as we all know, but Mm -hmm. regardless, that's my point is that there's, you know, there will be an impact, especially if somebody does that pricks their finger right after they've had some sort of binge episode. Yeah, to- 100%. And I've and yeah, we get questions about that all the time. AST can be impacted in as little as one week yes, <laughs> of heavy exactly. drinking. And so, and so I think that um, you know, it does set off alarm bells and it shows that alcohol is impacting your body, but I think the flip side of that is one week, one month of changing your drinking habits can also yeah. reverse your AST in the opposite level. So if you're thinking about changing your drinking habits and you're like, oh, reducing my drink count by only one or two week isn't making a clinical difference, this is a way to show you one, yes, it is. And two, could you imagine how much those more leveled out AST levels over one month, six months, you know, several years can impact your overall health and lower your risk for cirrhosis and other illnesses by a lot? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. where I think this is gold, ladies. There's such a narrative around alcohol that tells us that the only time to seek help is when you've hit rock bottom that this Mm -hmm. is the idea, this is the preset. And so I work really hard to change that narrative. And that's where I think that you and I are so aligned. It's like, this isn't about having a problem with alcohol. I would have told people that I was a moderate drinker. That's what I believed Mm -hmm. in my head. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was drinking more than 14 units a week. I was drinking more in the 25 to 30 units a week, but still on a relative basis, I didn't look different from the people around me. I was high, you know, going to work, you had kids like doing my life, right? Nobody on the outside would have said, Oh, Molly has a problem with alcohol. Never. That wasn't who I was, nor did I, ha- nor did I even in my head think I had a problem. I did have a family history which always had a lot of anxiety around it for me. Like I knew that mm-hmm. I was drinking more than I wanted to, (laughs) but I didn't, wouldn't have ever aligned myself with thinking that I was, you know, that I was an alcoholic in any way, shape or form. That's where I think this information can be so helpful because now when people do start to prioritize alcohol free days, when they start really bringing that number down from 25 to 30 to six to 10 drinks per week is huge. And then Mm -hmm. even, yes. And then more so, even if you go from 14 down to zero, there's incremental and large improvements every step of the way. And so I think it's really encouraging for women to be able to see that so that they decide, okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe I do want to increase my alcohol free days. There's good reason for it. Hey all, just a quick break in the show to talk with you for a minute about Sunnyside. It's fall and it's time for tailgaters and holiday parties on the horizon. There is never a better time than right now to put a mindful plan into place. And Sunnyside is my recommendation for how you can really use a tool that provides a way to track your drinks, measure your progress, and really uses proven behavior change techniques to create lasting habit change. The thing is, you can reduce your drinking by 30% in the first 30 days with Sunnyside. And you can save over $50 a month, cut out 2,500 calories out of your diet. And these are just based on average results. I know that people that I talk to and people that I work with are using Sunnyside and getting great results. 
If you'd like to find out if it will work for you, go to www.sunnyside.co slash minimalist to get started on a free 15-day trial today. It's exactly what you said. It's early preventive care. <laughs> we don't need to wait for symptoms to get really bad for something in our life to happen for a surprise diagnosis. Like that should just not be the case. And I think the way that the existing healthcare system treats alcohol is we only look at it when it is really bad. Um, whereas it's just, you know, it's silly that we spend so much time <laughs> researching other ingredients and things like the healthiest olive oils, sugar substitutes, but alcohol, you know, call it what it is. Ethanol is a carcinogen. That's something that we should absolutely be monitoring and making modifications, you know, to kind of before something bad happens. And then I think the second piece of that, which is a huge part of our alcohol health plans is that when we drink alcohol, I think we often think of it as almost like a cigarette. We know that it's not good for us. So we don't take a closer look into the other ingredients in our drinks, how they're fermented, which can have a huge, massive impact on our health and some of the other symptoms that we're having. Um, a big reason for that is that the uh, alcohol industry is regulated differently than food products. And so they're really only required to tell you that ethanol content and then um, like serious food allergies and that's it. <laughs> so we have no idea how much sugar added ingredients, right. preservatives, other crap is in what we're consuming. And so I think with the rise of kind of non-alcoholic drinks um, and, you know, people kind of getting more excited about taking alcohol free days to your point, that's slowly changing, but that's something um, that's kind of seeping up there, there its way into our body on top of the ethanol, which is just something that we, an easy hack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and so I do want to be clear about this because I say this, I mean, in the science, and I think it's important to note, and I'm not, again, I think this is a wonderful test with really valuable information. The deal with alcohol is we cannot isolate it. So we cannot just isolate it as the only thing that is, you know, because you can't, <laughs> you can't survive on alcohol alone. So in humans, we cannot do a you know, a double blind placebo controlled study over time to say that alcohol is causative for anything. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, we can, we know that in, in it shows it is a class one carcinogen, which I talk about here on the podcast. It's, it's known. So these are, that's a known causative risk, even in humans. It's not the, the link is not a hundred percent can't show it hundred percent, but it is definitely a known carcinogen. So we have to take it for what that is. We have to be, we have to be attentive to any carcinogen that we are taking into our body, allowing onto our skin like sunshine, right? I mean, we know these things. That's why it's important mm -hmm. to test these biomarkers and understand that this may not, I mean, this is going to give you a glimmer and, and, and insight into something that could be impacting. And it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that is impacting those biomarkers. Is that fair? Exactly. A hundred percent. It's kind of, I think of it as kind of like, um, a first step into exploring how alcohol impacts your health. And so, um, it, the way that seeks tests is particularly beneficial is if you do have any lingering health symptoms and you've tried to make modifications, whether it's diet, exercise, um, you know, prescription medication, but you haven't found relief, then we can help you do a, more of a deep dive into alcohol. But if you have lingering symptoms and you haven't tried anything yet, that we'll kind of, we'll also meet you with where you're at. So our alcohol health plans include modifications related to movement, um, diet and supplements. So it's kind of just a holistic view of health. So we do give you drinking modifications and insights into how alcohol can be impacting the biomarkers, but uh, we don't want to forget about the other things in our life, uh, which are equally important. And I've just found um, for my own relationship with alcohol and kind of trying to figure out what works is if you make changes to your drinking habits and you don't feel better, you kind of, I found myself going back to the same drinking habits because I'm like, why am I doing this? It's not working. And sometimes it's another, you know, hack within diet, fitness, um, supplements that you can kind of make a change. And then you will see that leg of progress from also changing your drinking habits. So you're more likely uh, to want to stick to it. Yeah. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. I, the, the reason this podcast is called the alcohol minimalist podcast is because we know that if we're going to include alcohol in our lives, it needs to be in a minimal way. And the safest amount is 
zero. That's that's not up for that's not up for uh, argument here. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage people to make those healthy choices, no matter what they are in terms of investigating their health. I love what you said. It's like, if you're not feeling better and you've taken the steps, that doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, here at least adding alcohol back in or increasing alcohol intake, it really isn't going to help you feel better friends. It's not the, it's not the answer. It Mm -hmm. is managing your mind. We talk about that all around here all the time but it means that it may not be the only thing that we need to investigate. And therefore it's, it's good to know. And we, and then take that and encourage other options or other healthy habits as well, because that's a part of being, you know, a healthier, happier human period in the test. There are options for sort of advanced detection, or I don't know, I don't know if it's advanced detection, that may not be the right word, but a more in-depth panel for both reproductive and breast cancer information. So talk with me a little bit about that. Yeah. So when we were thinking about kind of how we wanted to make the product accessible, one, I wanted it to be as affordable as possible. And so which it is, um, it's amazing. Yeah. And so, um, but the, the nice thing about it is that we knew that not all of our users would want to learn about our breast cancer risk, whereas most do. That's been our most popular ad on panel. Um, and not all of them will want to learn about their reproductive health. And so that includes fertility or menopause. We'll do a deep dive depending on what you want to focus on. And so those are add-on panels that you can push on to your order of our signature alcohol health test if you do want to learn more about one of those categories. So that was kind of the thought behind separating them out. And then um, it's kind of, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, we do a deep dive into, but we test biomarkers that are related to your reproductive health and breast cancer. And then we provide more analysis into one, how alcohol could be impacting them um, and two modifications that you can make to address any abnormal levels, but also any lingering symptoms. I think that there's nothing worse than going to the doctor and being like, I feel awful. And then all of your blood work coming back normal. And so right. we're certainly not in the camp of gaslighting. Um, we really do like to focus on symptoms equal, you know, and your drink count, other lifestyle habits as equally to what your biomarker levels are uh, to not dismiss symptoms. But then also, I think it's kind of just education about if you based on the most comprehensive research on how alcohol impacts women's health, which is what we've plugged into our database. This is how your drinking habits could impact your health if you continue on with the same drinking habits based on that research. And so it's education about where you're at now, but also where you could be based on all the information that we have. I love that. I I got curious while you're talking about the extra panels. Are there other extra panels in development. One that I'm wondering about is like dermatology, because you mentioned having had, um, a, you know, a go round with cystic acne. I'm sitting here looking at you. You have just a beautiful, gorgeous face and, uh, and skin. So I I'm assuming, and, and we know that alcohol is very impactive to the skin. So, Mm -hmm. um, any future plans? Yes, that's a great, yeah, that's a great question. Um, we have, um, before we launched, we had a fourth panel that we didn't tear out yet. Just, um, we launched with the biomarkers that based on our beta testing users were the most excited about. Um, but that's certainly something in the pipeline. Um, I think that they're, um, we're really excited about kind of like expanding, um, we have like beyond more in depth into certain health categories. So right now we do measure, some biomarkers related to inflammation, uh, vitamins, kind of the, that can be indicative of something going on with your skin, but a deeper dive into that, other health categories, and then genetics is something that we're also really excited about. One of the first uh, advisors that we brought on is Dr. Danielle Dick, who leads the addiction program over at Rutgers, and she's just super incredible. She's done like TED Talks on the topic and something that um, I really love about her as well, which is kind of a tang- a side note, is that her big focus is parenting and drinking, which is mm-hmm. super, super, super important just with like, whether it's a family history of alcohol use disorder, or just a family history of other alcohol related diseases, breast cancer, heart disease, liver cirrhosis. Um, that's really her bread and butter working with moms to kind of keep the communication channels open with their kids regardless of what age they're at. And so excited to continue to do um, more in genetics, but also more with her and just relation to parenting. 
Uh, yeah, we have to, you have to connect me with her. She needs to be, she needs to come have a talk yeah. with me. I am, she would love um, to come on. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, want genetics is one of those topics that is of vital interest to me being somebody that was the, uh, child of, uh, of an alcoholic, the thought work that went around the story that I held on to for a long time uh, in terms of driving my desire to drink and connecting those dots back to my genetics. So it's, uh, you, you know, it's been a, I would love to have that conversation and yes, cannot, uh, minimize the importance of having open conversations. And really, I, I hope that I see this on the horizon for alcohol. I mean, you know, you, we all can think back or, you know, at least historically, maybe we weren't alive, but there's, you can look back and watch television shows back from the 1950s, 1960s, you know, people are smoking everywhere. Everybody, like we, we look back even at the, at Mad Men, you know, and it's like the drinking and the smoking, like they were it, the story of the narrative of that time frame, and people were drinking and smoking, you know, at work and on airplanes. And, you know, I mean, it's like, and now it's like mind boggling to most of us, like, good Lord, we were just <laughs> flying around in airplanes full of smoke, like, and it's just, you know, you can't even imagine. Right. And I really yeah. do see on the horizon alcohol becoming I don't know if it's, you know, it's going to take a while for it to become the, the kind of the social outcast that smoking feels like it has become, but I do see that. I hope people are beginning to see it more as something that they want to, just like you said, like, we know it's not really, instead of the story, like I'm drinking and it's good for my health, you know, it's good for my heart understanding mm -hmm. actually, no, it is not. And if I'm going to include alcohol in my life, I want to do it in a, as low risk way as possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it seems like knock on board, we're going in that direction, especially with um, Gen Z is like completely leading um, right. the rise and kind of just drinking less, um, which is so incredible and funny to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's like just complete, you know, completely different experiences. Um, even like we um, had an intern this summer, um, who's super incredible. And she goes back to school in September and just kind of like her college experience. Um, she's about to start her junior year um, is different than my college experience. And so, <laughs> and I'm going to bet it's very different than my college experience because <laughs> we've heard <laughs> that was not even, I mean, that wasn't even a, a blip on my radar. That was just like, let's go. Right. That yeah. was the, <laughs> the alcohol story of, of my, of my generation. Um, Katie, this is really important work. It's really exciting work. And I'm just really grateful to you for deciding and thinking just, you know, what a great, like, did you just like, when you got this idea, were you like, oh yeah, this is a good idea. This is awesome. Or were you just nervous? And how did you connect? I mean, obviously your role, I'm assuming in both in, in what you did previously kind of helped you get connected to such a great team of researchers and doctors on your medical panel for, for helping you develop this test? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't, yeah, it definitely wasn't like the usual entrepreneur story where it's like, I'm trying right. to think of all these different ideas. Um, it really was just, um, my first kind of like inclination. I think that I wanted to do something, um, in relation to alcohol and women's health was June in the beginning of June, 2023. I was like, I think that education for younger girls, um, just going on the theme of like preventive health, early intervention is so important just because the age that we start drinking um, can make our chances of being a lifelong drinker up to 50%, which is equal risk to genetics, which is completely for risk for alcohol use disorder. Um, right. And it just like has a huge impact. And so um, I thought about kind of like doing some sort of conference type thing at high schools and universities for girls. And then I was like, but maybe I'll do that in a few years. And then um, a few weeks later, I thought of the idea for Seek and I started, I created the, I bought the domain like that weekend. <laughs> I just hit the ground running researching. And um, I, since I never thought I would start a company, I just listened to podcasts. I <laughs> had worked for a startup and, you know, I'd worked with a bunch of startups and bigger com companies as well on the ag agency side. And so I just completely reached out to my network got all the information that I possibly could in order to pull this off, made a three month work back timeline for myself. And I kind of just 
stuck at it, was working like a hundred hours a week, which is probably too much. But I think, like I said, um, when I started to reach out to my advisory board, I just got a lot of really fast yeses from a lot of really, really impressive uh, phys physicians and scientists who have been working at this a lot longer than me. And so that was kind of the first indication that I was on the right track. And then um, when I got to the point of building an early team to build our tech product, um, we did an accelerator program, Techstars, which is how we got our early fundraising to launch. Just yeah. the sentiment was kind of the same, that they saw that this was a huge gap in the market. Um, and outside of the fact that, you know, non-alcoholic drinks were kind of like popping on menus more, um, JAMA released their first study last summer that said that women were dying at nearly 15% higher rates of alcohol-related disease than ever in history. When you exclude pandemic data, in the beginning of this year, that number jumped to 35% in the U.S. and 46% in the U.K. If anyone's been following, it's like, I feel like a new study is coming out every freaking week. So in terms of like, finally, you know, it's a rising issue, but also just we're getting more clarity around some previous research that we saw that said alcohol could be, you know, potentially healthy for you. And now we know that that's really, you know, definitively not the case. Yep. I, yeah, it's just, well, it was a phenomenal idea, Katie. And I am uh, just congratulating you on being the, the, the superstar behind Seek. It's really exciting. It's been great to talk with you. Tell my list and, and tell my listeners where they can learn more about this great product. Thank you so much, Molly. I love what you're doing too. Um, I'm so appreciative to be on. Uh, our listeners can find us on our website, seekhealthtest.com um, or our Instagram, which is the same at seekhealthtest uh, or TikTok. If you <laughs> were on TikTok, which has been a whole journey for me to learn. <laughs> <laughs> just so y'all know, you know, yes, young 30 tech whiz. And she and I were laughing because we're both relatively new AirPod adopters. So, you know, that's, <laughs> that's uh, just an insight into Katie. She may be a tech whiz and, a, and an entrepreneurial, you know, superstar, and she's just new to the AirPod market. <laughs> new to the AirPod market and to the TikTok universe. <laughs> <laughs> So seekhealthtest.com, ladies, and really check it out. Very affordable, very interesting. And I can't wait to hear from some of you that do this test and learn more about how alcohol is impacting your body, especially for those of you that are getting ready to join me in more sober October. That might be a perfect time to work on changing and prioritizing some alcohol free days, and then maybe do the test before do the test after, and you will see what that might look like. Thank you so much again. You're welcome. Thank you. And thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for listening to the alcohol minimalist podcast. Take something you learned from this week's episode and put it into action. Changing your drinking habits and creating a peaceful relationship with alcohol is 100% possible. You can stop worrying, stop feeling guilty about over drinking and become someone who desires alcohol less. I work with people in three ways. You can learn about them over at www.mollywatts.com slash work with me. Or better yet, reach out to me directly. It's molly at mollywatts.com. We'll jump on a call and discuss what's best for you. This podcast is really just the beginning of our conversation. Let's keep it going.